Hey everybody, welcome to chapter 8, section 2, the Pythagorean Theorem and its converse. At this point, you've probably been exposed to the Pythagorean Theorem. Um, you probably know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in this video, I am going to go into a bit more detail and show you some different types of examples that relate to the Pythagorean Theorem. So to do the Pythagorean Theorem, you need to have a right triangle and you need to be able to identify the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the longest side of a triangle, and it's always opposite of the right angle. So if you were to draw a line from the right angle, it will point to the, the hypotenuse. So I like to always imagine um, this corner of the right angle marking pointing to the hypotenuse. And so, you know, if your teacher gives you triangles that are turned this way and that, just look for the right angle sign and look for it pointing to the hypotenuse. So in this first example, I will start off solving for the hypotenuse because my right angle is here, so it's pointing to the hypotenuse x. So it doesn't matter what side is a or b, it just matters what side is c. c is always the hypotenuse. So you're going to do 6 squared plus 15 squared. And if you did 15 squared plus 6 squared, that's the same thing, so you're fine. Um, and then you're going to set it equal to x squared. That's going to give me 36 plus 225 equals x squared. Add those two together, you get 261 equals x squared. The most common mistake kids make is they get to this point and then they just circle this and they say that's their answer. But you have your answer equal to x squared, it needs to equal x. So you have to take the square root of both sides. So when you do that, you'll get your final answer. And so you may have your teacher want to um, simplify the radical if you can, like the square root of 261 will equal um, 3 square root 29 because 9 times 29 is 261 and you can take the square root of 9 and that's 3. Um, or your teacher might be okay with you rounding um, and I'll round to like the nearest thousands place. So I'll get 16.155 and there's a 4 that comes after that 5 so that will not round it up. So um, yeah, this will be my final answer. One of these, one of these three forms would be it. So in example B here, the right angle is pointing to 11, making 11 my C value. So when you set this up, you're going to have x squared plus 9 squared or 9 squared plus x squared, doesn't matter. And you're going to equal it to 11 squared. So 9 squared is 81, and 11 squared is 121. So you'll have to minus 81 to the other side, and 121 minus 81 is 40. So you're going to write down x squared equals 40. And then you will take the square root of both sides. And so you'll get x equal to, um, you could leave it as a square root of 40 uh, if your teacher is nice, but they might ask you to simplify. 40 is 4 times 10. So the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 10 would stay behind. Or you'll round it to the nearest thousands place. So I'll do 6.324, and then after the 4 comes a 5, so I'm going to do 6.325. And so one of these three, they're all equivalent statements, would be my final answer. On example C, you see the right angle pointing to the 12, making that my hypotenuse or my C side. So I'm going to do 8 squared plus x squared, or x squared plus 8 squared, doesn't matter, just as long as you set it equal to 12 squared. And so 8 squared is 64. So you have 64 plus x squared equals 144. That's what 12 squared is. And so we'll minus 64 to the other side. That'll give you x squared equal to 80. So take the square root of both sides, and you'll get x is equal to the square root of 80, which simplifies. Let's see here. 80 is going to be um, 20 times 4. No, 16 times 5. And so the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 5 stays behind. And then if you wanted to do the rounded answer, you'll get 8.944, and then after the 4 comes a 2. So it'll stay 8.944. So once again, either one of these three would be acceptable for my final answer. 
So as you can see in the, the previous examples, we often get decimal answers. There are these patterns called Pythagorean triples, and those are right triangles that all three sides are whole numbers. And so you have a 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25. There's a bunch out there. You can Google it. Um, but we're just going over these four. And so you'll see variations of these. Um, like if you just multiply it by 2, you get 6, 8, 10, 10, 24, 26. The, you, know, you see what I mean? If you multiply these by 3, you get 9, 12, 15, 15, 36, 39. So, um, yeah, these are just showing you that you could have multiples of these. So as long as you multiply every number by the same thing, um, it's still Pythagorean theorem, triple, okay? So in this example here, I have 15 being my hypotenuse, and then I have 12 and X being my short sides. So you could solve this, but the point of me showing you what a Pythagorean triple is, is that you, you recognize it and you're like, oh, I know that's a 3, 4, 5 triangle or a 5, 12, 13 triangle or, or whatever. If you look at this closely, though, you'll see that 12, that's 3 times 4, and 15 that's 3 times 5. And so my this is going to be a 3 times this will be 3. Uh this this will be a 3 4 5 triangle because if you know one of the sides is 4 and the long side's 5, then it has to be a 3 4 5 triangle. As evidence from this table here, um so, yeah, you know this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle that's been multiplied by 3, okay? So I can say x equals 9, and I, again, I know that because um, I can tell that all these numbers are divisible by 3, or just these two, um, and then that gave me a 4 and a 5, so that means the other side has to be a 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. So looking at this one, you see x is unknown, and that's the hypotenuse. Um, so you look at 48 and 20, and what two numbers can those be divided by? 48 is an even number, 20 is an even number. Sure, they can be divided by 2, but can you divide anything bigger? Um, I know 48 is 6 times 8. I know 20 is 4 times 5. Uh, 4 goes into 48 12 times. And so let's see here. If I write 48 as uh, 4 times 12... And then if I write 20 as 4 times 5, I'm going to have a 5, 12, 13 triangle here. So I don't expect you to memorize these, you know, instantly. But if you look back at the table I just showed you, you'll see it's 5, 12, 13. So if you multiply 5 times 4, you get 20. If you multiply 12 times 4, you get 48. So um, what would my third side be? It'd be 13 times 4, and that's going to give me a value of 52. So if this really confuses you, just know that you can keep doing the Pythagorean theorem each time, and um, like 20 squared plus 48 squared will equal 52 squared. So if you did 20 squared plus 48 squared, you get 2,704. If you took the square to 2,704, you'd get 52. All right, so knowing the Pythagorean triples, it's just kind of a shortcut like um, to save you some time. But again, if you're stuck, just use the Pythagorean theorem. It won't fail you. So Damon is locked out of his house. The only open window is on the second floor, which is 12 feet above the ground. He needs to borrow a ladder from his neighbor. If he must place the ladder five feet from the house to avoid some bushes, what length of the ladder does Damon need? So here we look at the picture. And I see that I have 5 on the bottom, 12 on the side. And so the right angle forms down here, making this a hypotenuse. I can tell you that this is going to be 13 feet because it's a 5, 12, 13 right triangle. If you don't recognize that, do the Pythagorean theorem. Do 5 squared plus 12 squared equals x squared. 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144 equals x squared. Add those two together, you get 169 equal to x squared. If you take the square root of both sides, you'll get x equals 13, okay? So once again, just trying to show you some shortcuts. If you're stuck, use the Pythagorean theorem. Now, this last thing is called the Pythagorean inequality theorems. And so it is 
uh, kind of using the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem is only true if you have a right triangle. So what if you have an acute triangle or an obtuse triangle? Can you use the Pythagorean theorem for that? And that's not really. Like you can't use it to solve for a missing side, but you can use it to classify the triangle. So if I'm, if I'm giving you a triangle with three sides um, and it's not a right triangle because you don't see any angles labeled as a right angle, and I say classify this as acute or obtuse, then you would look at your two shortest sides, you'd square, do a squared plus b squared, and then you'd look at the longest side, use that for c squared, and then if c squared is less than the sum of a squared plus b squared, you have an acute triangle. If c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, you have an obtuse triangle. And then if it's equal to it, then you have a right triangle. Okay, so for this first example, I have three sides, 7, 14, and 16. I label them as A, B, and C, respectively. It doesn't really matter what's A or B again. It just matters what side's the C. The C's got to be the biggest side, so 16's the biggest number. Um, so what you'll do is you'll do 7 squared plus 14 squared, and then you'll do 16 squared. And we need to identify if that's going to be greater than or, or less than 16 squared. So 7 squared is 49, 14 squared is 196, and 16 squared is 256. Add together 49 and 196, you're going to get 245, and then you have 256. So 245 is less than 256. So you have C is greater than A squared plus B squared. So if C is greater than A squared plus B squared, then your triangle is obtuse. So in this next example, I have 9, 40, and 41. 41 is the biggest number. That gets the C. Label the other twos as, two as A and B. 9 squared is going to get you 81. 40 squared is going to get you 1,600. And then 41 squared is going to get you 1,681. So adding together 81 and 1,600 gets you 1,681. So that is obviously equal to 1,681. So again, that's just the Pythagorean theorem. If a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then you have a right triangle. So here you have sides 5, 7, 8. In these examples, I all put them in order from least to greatest. If your teacher gives you the numbers all jumbled up, again, just stick to the fact that C has to be the biggest number and A and B is not really important. But I just, you know, I just like to make A the smallest and B the second biggest and then C the largest. But anyway, A and B are, are 5 and 7, so do 5 squared plus 7 squared and then do 8 squared separately. And 5 squared is going to give me 25, 7 squared is going to give me 49, and 8 squared is going to give me 64. So 25 plus 49 is 74, and so bring down the 64. 74 is greater than 64. So if a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared, it's just put on the other side, but you see it's eating the a squared plus b squared. So then that means you have an acute triangle. So that's going to wrap it up for these notes. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Hit that like and subscribe button if you want, and goodbye.